And now, if you would please, say with me our call to worship. Happy are those who walk in God's ways. Joyful are those whose hearts are filled with praise. Come, let us love the Lord our God. We come to worship the one from whom all blessings flow. Amen. Amen indeed. And now if you would rise as you are able for the singing of our processional hymn. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, 
when you lie down and when you get up. Tie them as, a, as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. Write them on the door frames of your houses and on your gates. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. Teachers of the law came and heard them debating. Noticing that Jesus had given them a good answer, he asked him, Of all the commandments, which is the most important? The most important one, answered Jesus, is this Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. Well said, teacher, the man replied. You are right in saying that God is one and there is no other but him. To love him with all your heart, with all your understanding, and with all your strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself is more important than all the burnt offerings and sacrifices. When Jesus saw that he had answered wisely, he said to him, You are not far from the kingdom of God. And from then on, no one dared ask him any more questions. This is the gospel of hope. Praise, Praise to you, Creator, Christ, and Holy Spirit.
just a few more days to linger Then I will take my heavenly sink in for a moment. And will you pray with me, please? Holy and almighty God, once more we say thank you for the breath of life you have given each and every one of us again this morning, allowing us to rise, 
come into this holy place, sing these beautiful songs, hear your word proclaimed, and now seek out your blessing upon our lives. So speak to us now in our hearts, our minds, and our souls, your will for us on this day. We ask for this as in all things in that holy name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. A wise rabbi once said, God created human beings because God loves a good story. (laughs) Well, always seeking to please God first, let me tell you a story. A story of a little boy whose father taught mechanical engineering at a prestigious university. And one day this little boy came home, went in the back door into the kitchen and saw his mother and said, Mom, what time is it? And his mother wasn't wearing a watch, plus she was busy in the kitchen, so she said, well, go ask your father. He's in the living room. (laughs) And the little boy shrugged his shoulders and said, never mind. I don't want to know how to make a watch. I just want to know what time it is. (laughs) This is a story I can relate to personally because my father was a mechanical engineer and he was always trying to get me to figure things out instead of just answering my questions, which as a child drove me crazy. It's kind of like when most of us, I guess, at one point in our lives went to our parents to ask how to spell a certain word. Remember, how do you spell this word? And the answer a lot of times was, well, go look it up in the dictionary. To which every little child, you know, says, well, how am I supposed to look it up if I don't know how to spell it? (laughs) Of course, now we know that more often than not, they didn't know how to spell it either. That's why they told us to do that. (laughs) But when it comes to religion and our understanding of the Christian faith, I suspect there are times when we all feel like these little children again. There are 66 books in the Bible, and many of them can be long and complex to get through on our own. And for each book of the Bible, there are numerous commentaries explaining every nuance of every single verse. And if that weren't enough, there are other books on just about every conceivable topic of the Bible. There are books on the early church, the Christian understanding of the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit, ethics, history, worship, education, mission, stewardship, prayer, and on and on and on. If you've got a question, or if you're, even if you're just browsing, there are literally thousands of books you could pick and read on any topic. And you could read all day, every day, for the rest of your lives and still not make a dent in the mountain of information available on understanding this Christian faith and what it means to walk in the footsteps of Jesus. And heaven forbid, if you happen to pick up one of those books and it doesn't answer your question at all, or is so scholarly in nature that you find yourself overwhelmed by the time you get through the first chapter and like that little boy, simply shrug your shoulders and say, never mind. Well, we should never say never mind when it comes to our faith. And that's going to be the point of the sermon this morning. Without oversimplifying our faith, we need to keep it simple. We need something tangible and concrete upon which to build our faith. It needs to have enough substance to give us purpose and direction, yet not be so weighty to drag us down. It needs to be brief enough to memorize and simple enough for a child to understand. And while I am someone who does enjoy reading and poring through all sorts of books and commentaries, Even I desire something that I can hold on to as the kernel of my faith. And the good news is this. There is such a nugget of truth. And it's called the Great Commandment. 
and we read it this morning. When Jesus told his followers, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your mind, all your soul, and all your strength, and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. That's a very ancient prayer, by the way. One in use long before Jesus quoted it. And my hope is that if you don't already, that before you leave this service today, you will come to love this passage and be able to say it by memory so that it will become the rock upon which to ground your faith. So let's begin by going back to the roots of the great commandment which we find in the Old Testament. And there are actually two references that are put together. The first is from the book of Deuteronomy. According to Scripture, Moses got all of the Ten Commandments, remember, got all the people together at the bottom of Mount Sinai, he gets the commandments from God, he comes down, gives them to them, and then he says, now hear this, for this is the commandment which the Lord your God has told me to teach you, so that your days may be long. Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your mind, all your soul, and all your strength. Keep these words that I am commanding you today in your heart. Rejoice them. Recite them with your children. Talk about them when you're at home and when you're away, when you rise and when you, and when you lie down. Bind them on your hand. Fix them to your forehead. And write them on your doorposts and affix them to the gates to your home. There's something so beautiful in that prayer, a commandment, which is also a prayer. It's a prayer that's known as the Shema in Hebrew, or Shema Israel, because those are the first two words of the commandment. Hear, O Israel, Shema Israel. Shema must mean hear, right? Lots of prayers are named after the first few words in the, in the, uh, of what they say. Hail Mary, full of grace, what Gabriel says to, to Mary. The Shema Israel. It was and is, to this day, the most important prayer of the Jewish faith. It's the centerpiece of every Jewish service. It's taught to every Jewish child and recited twice a day by everyone who loves the Lord their God. Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord is one and you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your mind, all your soul, and all your strength. In the gospel lesson for today, Jesus uses the Shema to deflect an attack by one of the religious leaders. And while it might not have sounded like an attack in the scripture, it really was. Because in the passage this morning, this religious lawyer, the scribe, he wasn't coming to Jesus asking for wise counsel. He was looking for a way to entrap Jesus and convict him with his own words. You know, he says, Teacher, Jesus, which is the greatest commandment of the law? Sounds like a simple question. But it was intended as a landmine waiting to explode, because there's a hidden agenda there. Because the Jewish law contained, and still contains, 613 commandments. 248 of them were positive. You shall do this, you shall do that. And 365 of them were negative commandments. Don't do this, don't do that. 613 commandments in the Torah, the law the majority of which are prohibitions. And this lawyer comes and asks Jesus, which one is the most important? And therein lies the problem. For in Jesus' day, all of them were considered to be equally binding. So this lawyer was trying to get Jesus to single out one over all the others, and by doing so, commit an act of heresy. But Jesus was and is nobody's fool. 
because he knew that it is actually impossible to live by the letter of the law of 613 commandments all at the same time. Matter of fact, no one does today. Even the Jewish rabbis will admit, can't be done. He knew that it wasn't the letter of the law that was so important. It was the spirit of the law and how you followed them that is what mattered. And the spirit of law is this. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your mind, all your soul, and all your strength. And if you do this, it's pretty certain you're going to be glorifying God and don't worry about the rest. That's the essence of the Shema, the essence of life. I'm going to keep saying it so we all know it by the time we leave. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. But Jesus didn't stop there. He went on to combine this Shema with another commandment. This one found in the book of Leviticus because he added on to it, and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. The context of this commandment has to do with living in community with other people. You know, in ancient times, the Old Testament times, ancient Israel, and in the Old Testament, all of these rules about living together meant that, you know, we had to find a way not to kill each other, right? (laughs) And so it includes things like, don't kill each other. And then there's stuff about the harvest. Like, don't, you know, don't uh, go and and, uh, reap the field along the border. That part's part's supposed to be left for poor people and people passing through. Leave it for them. You know, it said other things like, Um, people who hire day laborers you're supposed to pay them when the day is over don't wait till the next day and keep the wages don't wait a week don't wait a month to pay someone pay them every day and then it goes on to say and you shall not take vengeance nor bear any grudge against the children of your people but you shall love your neighbors as yourself You know, I think then, just as now, it's tempting to sometimes substitute our religious piety for social responsibility. Meaning, well, I don't want to do anything about it. I'll I'll pray. I'm a prayer warrior. I'll pray. But uh, don't ask me to get involved. In other words, don't ignore the beggar on the way to church. In fact, the two go hand in hand. To love God is to love others. And to love others is to love God. It's stated clearly for us in the first letter of John where he writes, if a man says, I love God, and then hates his brother, he's a liar. For he who doesn't love his brother whom he has seen, how can he love God who he has not seen? this commandment we have from him that he who loves God should also love his brother. And this twofold nature of loving God and loving neighbor is embedded in what we call the Ten Commandments. You know, they're, they're kind of split into two different sections. The first four have to do with our relationship to God. You know, don't worship any other God than God. Don't make any idols. Don't take God's name in vain. Keep the Sabbath holy for your devotion to God. And then the other six, it turns around and tells us how to live with each other. Honor your mother and father. Don't kill each other. You know, don't commit adultery. Don't steal. Don't lie. And don't covet what other people have, meaning don't, don't be jealous of what other people have in their lives. I mean, in giving Moses the law, God made it clear, I believe, that a life of faith consists of devotion to God and service to others, not one or the other. So in combining the Shema with the laws of Leviticus, Jesus restored the balance that the Pharisees had lost, it seems, 
And in doing so, he created something new, like a new Shema. A Christian Shema, if you will. We're allowed to do that. Where we hear the words of Jesus, where he combines this together and says, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your mind, all your soul, and all your strength. And you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Like the Shema of the Jewish faith, the great commandment that Jesus gives us cuts through all that other stuff and gives us something brief enough to memorize, simple enough to understand, concrete enough to put into practice, yet profound enough to serve as the basis of deeper faith and understanding. I don't know of a better summary of the Christian faith by which to live. And in fact, it was Jesus who said, everything else, the whole of the law and prophets, meaning all everything else of Holy Scripture, depends on these two commandments. So as we prepare to give our gifts and our tithes in devotion to God and in service to others, remember well the spirit of the great commandment. Commit it to memory. Keep it in your hearts. Recite it to your children. Talk about it when you're at home and when you're away, when you lie down and when you rise. Say it with me if you can. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your mind, all your soul, and with all your strength, and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. It doesn't get any simpler than that. Nor is there anything greater than that. Amen? Amen. Will you pray with me, please? Let us pray to the Lord our God, saying, God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. O God, you are righteous and just. You watch over us and lift up the lowly. You have provided for all of our needs and are always faithful. So it is to you, O faithful one, we say that today we pray for our church, that we might be the seekers of justice, who go out to feed the hungry and watch over those who are in need. We pray for increasingly for the world and its leaders that they might turn to the way of righteousness and begin to free those who are oppressed and protect those who live in constant terror and fear. We pray for those who have to flee from their homeland because their leaders do not protect them. We pray for all of those who are kept bowed down, captive, or who are alone in life. Help us to care for them so that they may feel lifted up. And we pray this morning for all of those who continue to suffer in body, mind, or spirit. May they find restoration in your healing. And we lift up to you the silent prayers we hold in our hearts. May you hear our cries and comfort those for whom we pray. Through Jesus Christ our Lord and the unity of the Holy Spirit, all praise and honor are due to you, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen.
and join me, please, in saying together our prayer of revelation and illumination. Of all the things we are asked to do, none is higher than the command to love. We find it easy to love the ones we already like, but how difficult this command becomes when faced with those we would rather ignore. Help us, Lord, to complete your love on earth by searching our hearts and healing us. And now let us proclaim together our need for the guiding spirit of God in our lives. Holy God, Jesus embodied your unconditional love. Jesus fed those who were hungry and cared for those who were sick, drew near to those living on the margins, all the while proclaiming that the holy kingdom of God is near. May we become more like Jesus. Through the love shown to us by Jesus, we can be sure that we are near to the kingdom of God. We are becoming more and more like Jesus each day. Therefore, let us go gladly into the world knowing that we are surrounded by the cloud of witnesses that have gone before us. To which we all say, Amen. Amen. And may the Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right to give God thanks and praise. So let us join with that heavenly choir of angels in that unending hymn of praise, saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who came down to earth so that we may all know the wonder of God's love. So with thanks and praise, let us proclaim again what is the mysterious and miraculous truth of our faith, that Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ is here, and Christ shall come again. Hallelujah. And now let us all say together that prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. On the night that Jesus was betrayed by one of his own friends, he was sharing a meal with his disciples, and during that meal he took what was just an ordinary piece of bread until he raised it and blessed it and broke it and passed it to each and every person there with him, telling each of them to take and eat. For this now is my body, soon to be broken and given up for you. Later, during that same supper, Jesus took an ordinary cup of wine, raising it and blessing it. And then he passed the cup once more to each and every person, telling them to take and drink from this cup. For this now is the cup of the new covenant, which will soon be... Sh- sealed by the shedding of my blood for you and for all people across all time for the forgiveness of sin. And he told them that every time that you do this, every time that you share in this meal, remember me. Pray with me, please, holy and almighty God, we proclaim once more this week, we do remember. We have written upon our hearts all that you have explained to us through Scripture and through Jesus Christ which allows us to come to this table this morning asking for our blessing once more that you should turn these simple elements of your creation, bread and grape, into our spiritual nourishment, filling us once more with a sense of your grace, your compassion, and your love so that we may share it with a hungry world. 
And we ask for this blessing in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. My friends, we remind ourselves each and every week that we do celebrate an open communion table here at St. Jude's, as does every metropolitan community church around the entire globe. And we do this because we recognize that there are no statutes, no rules that we can put in place to keep you from coming to this table to receive these gifts now blessed by God for all of you. We simply and humbly ask that you do come and come just as you are.
we may say back to you that we will go out into this world sharing your love with those whom we meet. And we all say amen to this. Amen. 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 And now, if you would help me sing our closing song, I Love to Tell the Story, number 444.
Amen. My friends, as you leave this holy place today and going out into a holy world, remember the commandment of Jesus, which is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your mind, all your soul, and all your strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. Well done. Amen. 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 Thank you.